Evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thanks for joining us. The first Democratic debate kicks off in Vegas in a little over two hours from now. Hillary Clinton, she's trying to fend off four challengers who are all trying to resonate and chip away at her lead. And for more on what to expect tonight, we're going to go live to Las Vegas. Brandy Hit, she's in the spin room. Let's hear from her. The countdown is on here in Las Vegas with the lingering question, will Joe Biden run? The five candidates, though, who we know are taking the stage tonight are not worried about that right now as they prepare for their first big debate in the national spotlight. Iowa strong. For the first time, voters will see Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders finally face off. Let's transform America. Clinton appeared at a union protest rally outside Donald Trump's hotel Monday ahead of the high stakes national debate that will also include Jim Webb, Martin O'Malley and Lincoln Chafee. Also nearby, an extra podium. This photo posted by CNN just in case Vice President Joe Biden, who is still undecided, gets into the race. But his official schedule has him at the White House all day. It's highly unusual for a possible important contender uh, not to be in the first national debate. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows Clinton's favorability rating increasing two points to 47 percent, Biden at 45 and Sanders 35. It's a much smaller debate field than their Republican counterparts. Well, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. Yes, you did. Totally false. You wanted it. And will likely have a more civil atmosphere. It will be very different from the Republican debate. That's because attacks between the Democrats have been minimal. More on policy, less personal. President Obama, though, did weigh in on the Clinton email controversy on CBS's 60 Minutes. She could have handled the original decision better and uh, the disclosures uh, more quickly. And that email scandal will likely come up again tonight on the debate stage, along with topics like gun control and immigration reform. And this really is a key moment for those lesser known candidates to try and stand out. Reporting live in Las Vegas, Brandy Hit, ABC News. Now back to you. Thank you, Brandy. And let's bring on our panel right now. We've got Jeannie Zeno, professor of political science at Iona College, as well as professor of campaign management at NYU. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Welcome, Steve Rothman, back to the program, former Democratic congressman from New Jersey. He's got a lot to say here. We'll be talking about what's going on in Congress now. And Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. We're going to get into some poll numbers in a second, Jeannie. But in terms of expectations, um, both from the folks on the stage, but also the folks at home, fair to say if people are looking for the fireworks that we got um, before, at the Republican debate, you know, where nine raised their hands and one didn't or whatever. We're not getting that tonight. Probably not, although you never know. You don't know if Martin O'Malley or Jim Webb or one of these, you know, kind of, I doubt Lincoln Chafee, one of these three outsiders will try to go at it, but I, I seriously doubt it. I think it's going to be up to the moderator to really ask some tough questions to Hillary Clinton about the email scandal and about other things, and I think she's going to be fine answering them. She is a seasoned, really good debater, and so I think the big thing is not going to be the fireworks, <coughs> but more of the substance. You know, Donald Trump is not up there. Carly Fiorina is not up there as much as Martin O'Malley would like like to have a Fiorina moment. It's not going to happen for him tonight. So, you know, it's going to be, I think, a little bit more subdued and a little bit more wonkish. But I think that's what Democrats and out there want. I mean, they want to hear about the substance. They want to hear what separates these candidates. And Hillary Clinton's going to try to make sure it's not too much. And also, Dominic, I don't know that the other guys on the stage don't necessarily want a job um, if the Democrat wins in the next administration. They've got a little bit more to lose um, than throwing haymakers at a Trump good term. You won't see that for the most part. Maybe, maybe Martin O'Malley might try it a little bit, but I even doubt that. You're right. Uh, the assumption is that Hillary Clinton is going to win this thing, if you believe in the polls, and that you want to be part of the administration. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to be very interesting, though. She has to be very careful, because I'm thinking back to her moment, and I know the professor would have more details on this, but remember, Richard, when she was at a debate, she's a seasoned debater, and she faced a question about Elliot Spitzer and driver's licenses for immigrants. And she fumbled in terms of the answer, and that started, and that was really the beginning of the end for her. That started all of the, oh, you know, she's too slippery, and you know, she's ducking questions. So she has to be careful and make sure she doesn't make a mistake like that tonight. You know, Andrew, for me, it's really interesting, depending on who you talk to, 
what they think the expectations are or are not for Hillary Clinton tonight. Uh, some say she's got to re-energize the campaign. Others are saying she just doesn't have to fall over on the stage. Obviously, there's much more at stake uh, for the other folks who are trying to gain some name recognition and have more than a half of a percentage point the next time the polls come around to give some relevancy or point to the campaigns. What does she have to do and not do? Well, I think what she has to do is try to continue her campaign of being personable, relatable. She's not the Hillary Clinton that you might know from the news stories. She's a, a more engaging. And we're looking at the numbers where they the, are right now going into tonight here. So for those folks who look at Iowa and New Hampshire, Andrew, and say, oh, you know, Sanders neck and neck on a national level, he doesn't play outside. No, he doesn't. And he always does better in New Hampshire. He's from neighboring Vermont. And so those numbers are skewed a little bit, although there's always a little bit of debate because after Iowa and New Hampshire, those things tend to gain their own momentum and they go from there. A as for Hillary Clinton, again, she has to try to reach out and connect to viewers uh, watching tonight the same way that you've said when you interview her, she comes across as much more personable than she does in the way she's represented in the media. And I think it's a do-no-harm strategy otherwise for her. She needs to really not have a gaffe moment like the kind that, that Dominic was describing and try to convince viewers and voters that she is the inevitable and most electable Democrat on that stage. In Congressman, Think back eight years ago, and I remember some of the horse trading where guys like you were getting pressed. Are you an Obama supporter? Are you a Hillary supporter? You almost had to pick camps here. Um, maybe not this early, but not that much longer than this two election cycles ago. There isn't that pressure this time around, is there? They want to coalesce around a candidate, but Democrats got real questions about not so much Benghazi, but the email scandal. You heard the president on 60 Minutes. Does she have to answer that tonight satisfactorily? I think she needs to do that uh, specifically, but in general, I agree with my colleagues here on the panel and you, she has to demonstrate authenticity and likability. Uh, she will demonstrate her competence and knowledge of the issues, uh, but her authenticity will go to her electability. People, uh, there are growing numbers of folks around the country who have questions about uh, character issues mm -hmm. that have been thrown at her, like uh, mud balls <coughs> uh, by uh, uh, some in the House. And uh, how she handles all of that will be very important. But I do want to get to your, your question about are some folks holding back on endorsing Secretary Clinton? And I think the answer is yes. You may know that I chose to endorse uh, yep. Senator Obama up when he was a U.S. Senator rather than endorse uh, 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 Senator Clinton. Um, and uh, most of the folks had already gone with her. Uh, there are some who are still holding out for Joe Biden uh, to see, frankly, whether this person who they like a lot, Joe Biden, might enter, and also to see whether Secretary Clinton continues to uh, fall in the mm -hmm. polls or in likability, or whether she stabilizes and can demonstrate I'm her curious, competence. Eight years ago, or seven years ago, I guess, when you had to make that choice, why'd you go um, with a neophyte to Washington and Senator Obama instead of Hillary Clinton, which many people thought at the time was the inevitable candidate nominee? Well, I had actually worked with both of them. I had read. Uh, uh, both of uh, Senator Obama's books. I talked with him at length about a variety of subjects. I had worked with uh, Mrs. Clinton when she was a First Lady and then when she was <coughs> Secretary of State. That was one of my committee assignments, Foreign Operations and State on the Appropriations Committee, along with Defense. So I, had, I knew each of them. I thought they would both make good presidents. I thought it was time for Barack Obama uh, for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. I thought he was slightly better and uh, that America would see uh, itself differently with him as president, the world would see us differently. Yep. And I think he's made, uh, he's been a wonderful president. So it wasn't a negative about Hillary Clinton? It was more the positives of Barack Obama? I'll leave it at that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you let him off there pretty good. Um, let me press you though. He mentioned two things that we've seen in polls. And tell me how much they really matter. That's <coughs> likability and trustworthiness. And we may even have some numbers that support this. And I know you've looked into this. Um, Jeannie, when you break down polls, how much does it matter that you have to believe the person? I mean, at the end of the day, Bill Clinton wasn't completely trusted by the public, but they probably, you know, if given a chance, would have voted for him again because they trusted that he'd get the job done, not that they necessarily trusted what came out of his mouth. How much does liking him and trusting him matter? 
You know, I think we tend to overstate in the media likability. Trust is more important, but it usually comes down to who you think is going to do the better job, like them or not. So there is this kind of idea out there in the media that you need to like this person. You need to want to have a beer with them and go out with them. And that hasn't proven traditionally to be the case. Now, it doesn't hurt to be likable. So mm -hmm. it, it's not as if people should, you know, just forget about it. Right. And I think she does have to come across as authentic and as likable as she can. But, you know, I was looking back to her 2007 debate. I think it was the one in New Hampshire where President Obama famous, famously said, you're likable enough. Yeah. Yeah. But right before that moment, Hillary Clinton had a wonderful moment where she mm -hmm. said, the moderator asked her, you know, you're not very likable. You're not, you know, people don't like you that much. And she said, kind of joking around, oh, that hurts me so much. You know, I, I would like to be likable. And I agree, Barack Obama is likable. You look at that moment, and that is authentic Hillary Clinton. She is, as we all know, in person, a likable person. So I don't think that's as much of a challenge as the trustworthiness and the authenticity issue. People have to trust that you are going to do what you say you're going to do. So I think, to Dominic's point, the flip-flopping is much more of an issue than the likability. But here's somebody who's really good at answering questions. She's going to be pressed on the TPP. She's going to be pressed on Keystone as <coughs> she should. And she's going to have to show why she moved over to the left. And she's going to have to explain her coming late to gay marriage and those kinds of things. So she's going to have to do that. And, I and think she that's tried more that a important. little bit already uh, in obviously a different venue in SNL. As she was Val. making jokes about <laughs> SNL, uh, about gay marriage yeah. and how quickly or not that she came to the issue. The president, Dom, He's had a few chances here. It was anybody who knows how these things work, when Ernst came out and said the best hire ever made was Joe Biden, um, that was clearly an indication about his uh, secretary of state and where she fell in his pecking order. And then what he said in 60 Minutes, <clears throat> not only did she shouldn't, didn't handle it right on the front end, but she didn't handle it right in her disclosure. He didn't have to go there. I mean, he could have thrown her a lifeline. I think we tend to over-exaggerate the human dramas of what goes on. But it definitely looks like there's definitely a split here in the in the Obama Clinton camp, <laughs> as much as maybe some of us suspect. You know, I guess, Professor, you have a crystal ball because it goes back. In my opinion, I remember being in ha New Hampshire. I remember you out on the campaign trail. I remember that moment when when she said that hurt my feelings yeah. about the likability <laughs> thing. But keep, I'm glad you brought that up because keep in mind she went on to come back in New Hampshire and win. Yeah. She came back and won, so she beat Mr. Obama at his own game. I think at the end of the day, they're not the best of friends, but it's, I, first of all, will Biden run? I mean, in my opinion, he's wanted to run all along, but the handwriting was on the wall and he couldn't beat Hillary Clinton. So now the unfortunate situation of his son, which I think the public is a little tired of hearing about, frankly. You know, I mean, I understand it's a very sensitive nature, but will Biden run? And no matter what, the president, he cannot make an endorsement. He has to, he's going to make, he's going to say things that play to one over the other, but he has to pull back. He well, can't endorse. Do you think the public would be surprised at how many Democrats in Washington privately are hoping that Biden gets in and would support a Biden candidacy more than what we believe to be an inevitability with Hillary? It depends how Hillary does tonight. Really? I think if she holds her own, as Jeannie says, and demonstrates her command of the issues and her authenticity and can explain the change in position on the, the matters you mentioned, Keystone Pipeline, uh, the uh, Pacific uh, uh, Agreement, Trade Agreement, et cetera, uh, then she'll be all right. And she may retain enough support uh, that uh, Biden chooses not to get in mm -hmm. the race, or if he does, uh, she'll, she'll win anyway. Okay, we want you at home to get involved in our conversation, so please head over to Facebook and Twitter and sound off on our question tonight. First guess this thing. You don't give me the answer at 1030, okay? Who do you think comes out the big winner when it comes to tonight's debate? Up next here, we'll continue our conversation on what's going to happen in Nevada tonight. The candidates on stage are running, obviously, for this man's job, but will they run away from his legacy or run towards it? Stay with us. We'll be right back.